A lot of people damage these trying to remove them. And that is my goal in showing you this video is hopefully to show you all the screws so you don't miss any and snap the bezel trying to take it out. Because not only is it screwed in, it is clipped in after you take the screws, which means you have to pull it off the dash. And if you don't have all the screws out, you will crack this dash bezel. It is very fragile. These are hard to come by. This is 2022 and people want a fortune for a good one. And I can't say I blame them. You can find this dash bezel on all 1998 and newer S10 Blazer, Sonoma, Jimmy, Bravada, Ombre. They're all going to have this bezel. Now, some of them aren't double din cut out. Luckily, this one is in the Bravada. Welcome to our 1998 Oldsmobile Bravada. We have second generation Firebird Trans Am 15 inch snowflakes on it right now. I love the fitment in the back. The front stick out too far. You can't really tell because of the way I have the wheels turned, but they do stick out about an inch or so. And the back well, the back doesn't stick out at all. We are going to be changing this factory radio, and it's a shame because it's beautiful. It says Oldsmobile right there on it. This radio was solely for the Bravada in the S-Series chassis. Another thing to point out while we're in here, this is another feature of the Bravada. Notice the miles per hour goes all the way to 120 miles per hour. It also says Bravada Smart Track down there. It has less notches in between all the numbers on the gauges. And I do believe that it has its own font. The first thing you're gonna wanna do before you start messing with anything electrical is remove a battery cable. Four point three liter V six. Excuse that wire, it's a test wire. Dash bezel here goes around the radio, the HVAC, the cluster, on over to the driver's door there. This one, as a matter of fact, when we bought this Bravada, it had several cracks in it, and I was very upset because that means that somebody had tried prying it apart and didn't know what they was doing and i will show you those now there's one crack that goes from where the normal four-wheel drive switch would be it goes from there all the way up to here you can see where they tried prying on it with most likely a screwdriver somewhere in here is another crack and then right there is the third one so i've been dreading this day but since we're putting a double din radio in it, the time has come where I'm forced to remove the dash bezel. So this gives me a perfect opportunity to show you guys how not to damage one. You're gonna need one tool for this situation here, and that is a seven millimeter socket. All of these screws are seven millimeters. Now that I've got the battery cable removed, I'm gonna get started and pulling this off. I'm sure you're wondering what this mess coming out of the console is. That mess is a three-way switch, and it's a mess right now because I'm just testing it out. The Bravada all-wheel drive smart track has an automatic four-wheel drive engage on the transfer case. This vehicle is not always an all-wheel drive. It is always in two-wheel drive until the all-wheel drive engages. When it senses that the rear wheel speed is faster than the front, it engages the all-wheel drive transfer case via an electric motor. There is no vacuum actuator on the front differential like you will find on most other S-Series platforms. And this switch was me trying to bypass the automatic all-wheel drive. That's just a test. I haven't got that all the way figured out yet. And I've got other things to do, so that will have to wait for another video. Okay, first I wanna start off with the fact that you must take this lower kick panel down before you can take this dash bezel off up here. 
and there are a couple of screws that you're gonna have to remove. I have now taken out this screw, this one, and there is one over here that I have taken out. You might notice that yours has more down here going to the kick panel. All we're really trying to do is lower this to expose a few screws that goes to this dash bezel. And after you've taken those three main ones out, you can pull down on this to release the clips. Once you do that, you will find there is a hidden screw right here. There is also a hidden screw right there. And another thing I'm noticing is several hairline cracks around that screw on both of them. What that tells me is somebody probably over tightened those screws when they was reinstalling this dash bezel. Speaking of hidden screws, there's one right there that you might miss. Don't forget about it. Once all the screws have been removed from the dash bezel, it will unclip from the dashboard. I will show you that in just a moment. If mine does not fall apart on me as I take it out. The headlight switch will come out with the bezel. The rear wiper switch, rear hatch switch, and yours might have a passenger airbag switch in this location will also come out with the bezel. The radio and the HVAC will stay connected to the dashboard. The vents will come out with the bezel. I am going to attempt to pop this dash bezel loose. This might end very badly, or it might end just fine. We shall see. Okay. It's a miracle, but it is in one piece. My next step is to unplug this and unplug this so I can remove it and work on the radio freely. By the way, this was our radio. This radio works, but it does act sporadic. It will turn off randomly and turn on randomly and spit out error codes. The tape cassette doesn't work, the radio or the CD player doesn't work. I now have the dash bezel most of the way off. I still left the headlight switch connected over there because I was able to wiggle it up and over the steering wheel enough to get it out of my way by releasing that switch right there. And all I did was have to push in on that piece right there and pull it out of the back of this. Now I have full access to the radio. It looks like it has four of these seven millimeter screws holding it in. So I'm going to pull those out now and see what's back there. Also check that out, there's a temperature sensor. I have now removed all the screws and I was able to wiggle that free and I was wrong. That screw didn't need to come out yet. That one didn't need to come out yet. And that one didn't need to come out yet. We have an antenna wire. We have some sort of nub. Unsure of what that is. And then we have its main wiring harness right here. Antenna. Wow. That immediately broke off. The clip broke right off of the back of that. Luckily, we don't need that clip. Although, it's never good to break something. Manufactured August 24th, 1995. And this is a 1998 model, so they must have carried this on or this was replaced. 
Check out those cooling fins. Still unsure of what that is. All of the buttons are there. And this is what we are working with. Here is our clip. Our wiring harness, should I say, that we will be tapping into for using in our double den touchscreen radio.